Hi everyone, Aldbar here. Before we get started, we should go over to the marketplace and pick up the level 7 hireling named Flower. The reason we want this one specific is because it has the ability to turn undead. Next up, I'm going to jump over to the crafting hall. I'm going to type in rune. I'm going to pick up minor petrify runestone. It's very low level, you should be able to craft it. This isn't necessary, you don't have to do it, but it will help you out a lot if you can. Make sure you put it on your hotbar. Next we're going to go to the quest. It's the warforge only at the bottom of the map. And we're off to the quest. I'm going to show you how to solo Tomb of the Burning Heart. As you can see, it's meant to be played by four players, but we're going to do it just us. Step in, you're going to summon your hireling. Make sure to park her, make sure she doesn't move, and then also make her to be passive. Make sure she doesn't attack anything. We're going to step into the main hall and we're going to go to the left. Make sure some of the whites or ghouls, whatever they are, come after us. Now I'm going to stand next to the wall off the pedestal, leaving space for the ghouls to stand on the pedestal. As they're attacking me, jumping towards me, I'm going to hit one of them and flash him, turn him to stone. Now I'm going to stand on the other side and summon my hireling. Here I'm going to wait for the ghouls to be standing on the pedestal and when I see them standing on it, I'm going to hit the turn on dead. Now I have both of these pedestals active, I'm going to run to the other side. Here I'll call my hireling, then I'll jump on the other one. For some reason, the one I stoned must have moved or something. So I'm just going to stand here. Again, I'm going to tell my hireling to turn on dead. I'll have more ghouls frozen on this side, and I'll just run back to the other side. This may take you a few attempts, this is my fourth attempt, but it's not too big of a deal. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm assuming that most of you just came to see this, but for my loyal viewers, the video is going to continue on. Anyways, I'm assuming that many people have never actually finished this quest because they only want to play solo and didn't want to shell out money to buy three hirelings that are all gold sealed just so they can have them all at the same time so I'm showing off a way that you can do it for free to play I mean you still have to pay for the quest but without any without spending any extra in-game money to play anyways this this quest has it's a big circle half of the party is supposed to go right and half of them is supposed to be left and they hit they meet someplace in the middle now once you get to the middle you actually can backtrack down the other passageways which is what I'm going to be doing here and show you all the little secret rooms and stuff. The rest of this quest is pretty formulaic so it repeats itself a lot. Once you get into these main halls you have these levers to we'll open up the gates to the other side. This particular room I'm in repeats itself basically three times. One on each side and one at the end. You can jump up over here and get all the skeletons rather than trying to range attack and hit them with their crazy damage reduction against piercing weapons. I'd like to point out that the level the level 7 hireling that I bought, Flower, can be bought for shards as a gold seal hireling 
for four shards. So if you have shards, you can buy it at the marketplace. Or you can buy it in the DDL store, I believe, for 30 DDL points. That basically means that you can do this as a level 5 barbarian. Shout out to whoever on the forum said you couldn't. Just kidding. And I'm just backtracking a little bit, get all the breakables, and also show that there should be a shrine at the end, the far end on the left and the far end on the right. First time I did this quest, I believe I ended up spending money and got in getting some gold seal hirelings. And I did really feel like I was cheated out of my money. It's not enough that I had to pay money for this adventure pack. I have to spend more money so I can complete the quest. And I really didn't want to have to do it with the party. I tend to only try to join parties for quests that I've already done solo. Basically making this kind of impossible. Not knowing how to do it. So if everybody else was in the same situation, this is for you. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, please give me a like. Maybe even subscribe. Thank you. watching this I'm kind of realizing that maybe my choice of a black cosmetic on a generally dark black quest wasn't perhaps the best idea but you can see me at least by my staff so it's what it is here you should look if you see on the map this shape this shape of a room Every time it shows up, and it shows up a few times in the map, there will be secret doors on both sides of the hallway. You walk through the center, doors will jump open on both sides. If you go into the little hallways behind, there will be a secret door on each side. And many times there's either collectibles or chests, and perhaps even named bosses. Here we get the first lever that opens up the access to the center. If you'd, if you'd be coming from the right, you would have one of these also. And then there's another one in the middle, who gains access, who allows you basically to access the other side. So. this hallway you'll get to the end of the quest. It is not necessary to go back or backtrack. So if you would like to see me continue from here just skip ahead to the 18 minute mark and I'll be back right over here and I'll go straight to the end. But if you want I'll show now how I backtrack and go pick up the other side. Basically my point is that even if you solo it, you don't like miss out on half the quest. You still have the option to see the entire quest. 
both sides, get all the optional chests and bosses, etc. You don't actually miss out on anything. As I mentioned before, this is like my fourth attempt. Uh, you don't really have to leave every time, but I wanted the video to be snappy and short, at least at the beginning, so as soon as I saw it didn't go so quickly for me, I just walked out of the quest and started again. There's no, it's not, no big investment, so you should probably do the same. If you start killing too many ghouls or goals, and it goes, it starts falling apart, just, just walk out of the quest and reset and start again. It's much faster than trying to save it. I also wouldn't buff until after I finished the entrance part. Once I get past the gate, the gate's open, then I'll buff and continue my quest. Anyways, here I'm heading into the right side. It's basically a mirror of the other side. Give or take, it's not exactly the same, but the same concept. Here you can see again on the map that was little rounded squares kind of shaped rooms with the hidden doors on both sides. This lever is locked. If I would be coming through the right side, it would open up the way for me. But since I came through the left side, the way is already open, so the lever stays locked. It's not relevant for anything, just that's what it is. When it comes to joining parties, I usually tend to shy away, if possible, and only play with people I know, who doesn't leave me with many. But once I play a quest once or twice and I know it and I feel confident that I can do it, so then I don't mind joining a party. I believe there's many more players just like me, and this, this quest is a very, big, a very good example for what's the problem having quests who force you into having a party because you're not going to want to do with a party and just going to cause you lots of anxiety or you'll just maybe just give up on it so I'm very glad that I have a way to show or at least have the option for you to do it solo by yourself I don't think it's too difficult I think everyone should be able to pull it out pull it off also shout out for the wiki there's many different suggestions this one seemed most practical, and as you can see, it wasn't too hard. You don't have to be able to cast any specific spell, you don't have to have use magical device or a wand. There's nothing crazy you have to do, any character can do it, so... I think it's, I think it's feasible for most players to do it. If you do do it and it works for you, maybe leave me a comment. Make me very happy to see somebody get some use out of it. By the way, 
in the harbor, you pick up a lot of these string beads of prayers, these yellow beads. And usually they fall from like kobolds and stuff. You pick up tons of them. There is a collector in the harbor. I believe his name is Gold Scuttle or something. He's a kobold. And for every three you give him, he'll give you a potion of lesser restoration. It's very cheap and you should definitely go get a stack. Get rid of all the different like side effects. I was having a problem with having too many of them in my collectible bags. And it's very useful to know, so. Anyways, here I'm already back to the start. I'm just opening up the last bit of the map. That's it, now I'm gonna head back towards the end. Got all the breakables, I went through all the secret doors, killed all the monsters, and now I'm gonna head towards the end. Here we are, back to the center. I'm gonna go quickly and shrine before I continue. Finally, this is the last room. This is similar to the other rooms, but there's also traps in this room. These traps are disabled by shooting a projectile. So, there's a switch. If I hit it with a ranged weapon, it will turn off these dart traps. I don't really have to turn it off. I can probably just run through it, but I'm just showing off how the mechanic is supposed to work. another one on the bridge over here but I'm just walking over the rim so I'm completely avoiding it anyways. By the way if you fall off over here into the water there's ladders that you can get back up. Here's the second level meant to shoot it.
string. You can actually just pull the lever, you don't have to shoot it. You can see it turns off the, the trap. That was the lever that opens up the end way, and now we're up to the boss fight. The boss fight is a mummy, like all of these quests, and if you do get mummy rot, you'll need to remove it by using curse removal and then disease removal. The way to remember that is C, D, in the order of the letters, curse and then disease. Anyways, now is that. I don't think it's worth the XP, but the bloody crypt is definitely worth the XP, and you need it for flagging. So that's that. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll try to do my best to post more content. Uh, content. Anyways, see you later. Bye.